In the previous videos, you were able to see how Barry interacted with the three older Davis brothers, George, Jack, and Peter. This part of the series is an introduction to Michael, the one boy who Barry loved the most, the first of the family to be born after he had become associated with the Davises. If Barry's relationship with George could be called close, his devotion to Michael was almost obsessive, in an entirely positive way, to be sure, for Michael himself, from his earliest childhood on, was equally devoted to Uncle Jim. By the time Peter Pan had already become a landmark success, Barry took some photographs of Michael dressed as Peter to be used as a model for a statue that was planned to be erected to immortalize the boy who wouldn't grow up. Peter! Michael! Father! Hello, dear boy. Hello, Father. Where's Uncle Jim? He'll be out in a minute. Father's got his birthday present for you. Oh, thanks. Hello, Father. Can I show you my rats? No, you can't. I haven't shown my butterflies yet. I wanted to give you a first edition with plates, but your mother saw me back if you know. Give what? give you nightmares, darling. Oh. Why? Well, they're very... Oh, it doesn't matter now. <laughs> Why don't you wheel Father round the garden? Michael, look what Uncle James brought you. Oh, please, may I go and open it? Well, no, darling, no. I, I really no. don't think you would. Let him go if he wants to. Uncle James. Come on, then. <laughs> Why is he called him Uncle Jim? Oh, why not? He's not our uncle. <laughs> no, Jack, I think Uncle Jim knew him very well. <laughs> now, who's going to show me around the garden? I will follow. No, we all will. Let's show him the black cup's nest first. No, I was first. I want to show him my rats. Look, Mother. Look at Uncle Jim's given me. Well, that's lovely, darling. May I put it on? Yes, yes, of course you can. Uh, let me go help you. Boss boys! That's it, that's better. Now look straight into the camera. Let's hear that drum beating inside of you. Yes, sir. Just look through this. Won't be a minute. Shortly afterwards, in 1907, the boy's father, Arthur, died of jaw cancer, the first in a series of appalling tragedies that befell the Davis family. The following clip contains a brilliant scene between Barry and Michael, set to take place during their 1908 Christmas skiing trip to Switzerland. It shows the intimacy and casual tenderness between Barry and Michael. I hope you enjoy. Hey, uh, on. Uh, can, uh, what time does the afternoon post usually arrive, please? Excuse me, monsieur. The. Il veut savoir quelle heure arrive la poste. Six heures de mi. Merci. Il said half past four. Merci. Your turn. I hope you've got enough money to pay me. Oh, Scotsman's never short of ways of making money. I remember I once paid the boy a shilling a day to do his mourning for him. His mother had just died, and he was finding it rather uphill work to look solemn, especially as the football season had just started, so I volunteered to do his mourning for him. Remember, every day I used to swap my green jacket for his black one, and I'd go and stand in the corner of the playing field, and I'd squeeze my fist into one eye like this. But Tears would come out the other way. He ran gaily off to play football. It's your turn. Oh. That's another ten francs you owe me. Mm. You want another game? Mm-hmm. Can you afford it? 
Nope. I love crime. It makes me go all misty inside. But nothing much makes me cry anymore. I used to lots, but not anymore. I bet I can make you cry. I bet you can't. Same, Frank. Done. Am I for a story? No, no, just a thought. About me? About your father. You can't make me cry about him. I thought I would forever, but I didn't at all except for a bit. Mother still cries, though, doesn't she? Do you love her? Of course I love her. More than Mrs. Barry? You shouldn't ask questions like that. You said I could ask you anything in the world. When was I so rash? When we were playing the game. I was only in the game. Let's play the game now. I'm bored of winning drafts all the time. Anyway, what have you written down? Michael said, your father leave me anything in his will. I said, yes. Disease of the liver. You never said that. Well, next time. Let's play the game. Who do you like best? Best of who? Me and Nico and Peter and Jack and George. Well, oh, and you're not allowed to say all the same. Jack. Liar. Peter. Liar. Well, if you know the answer, why ask the question? I'd just like to hear you say it. You flatter yourself, don't you? What's the most exciting thing that's ever happened to you? Hmm. Hmm. Most exciting thing that ever happened to me was something beginning with M. Money. <laughs> Besides money. Mother. Warmer. Michael! Oh. Me! You can see the balls, even me. But it is me, isn't it? Oh, do say it's me. I won't tell anyone. All right. Well, it pains me to confess it, yes. Me is the most exciting thing that ever happened to me. Not you, mind. Me. But at least I'm the second most exciting thing, aren't I? Oh, no. The second most exciting thing that ever happened to me was when a school friend of mine came running up to the house one day and told me that an old man who used to give us sweeties had slit his throat with a razor, and if I hurried, I'd see the blood. Did you? I most certainly did. It was just about the most thrilling thing I've ever seen. It was enough blood to make us black puddings for six months. Now it's my turn. Why don't you go skiing with the others? To be with you. Till death us do part. Hold out your wedding finger. Why? Go and blow a smoke ring on it. But we're both boys. You speak for yourself. You're a boy, too. No. <clears throat> I'm what is commonly known as grown up. You're not common, and you're definitely not grown up. You're old, but you're not grown up. You're one of us. How do you know? 
because... Because I think if you were really a grown-up, you wouldn't waste all your money on a boy like me. You presume to know me very well, don't you? Inside out. Without a doubt. Is how I see... the mystery of J. M. B. Quite the coming poet, ain't I? To be a poet is a great thing. But to be a poet and not to know it is the most glorious thing in the world. Besides, there's no money in poetry. Maybe not. But there's a lot of poetry in money. Hello, Uncle Jim. We've had an absolutely spanking time. <laughs> I shall never be any good at it as long as I lose. <laughs> when you fell over. Oh, Gilbert the Filbert took us loose on Roche, and then we drove over to Montreux for lunch. <laughs> I got a bit tipsy. Rick the nasty. Where's your mother? She's downstairs in the billiard room with the others. Come on, we're going to have a slosh tournament. Oh, I did love all that mahogany. No, I've still got a lot of work to do. Uh, so is Mr. Cannon. Well, don't be long. No. Has there been any news? Yes, Froman telegraphed to say the Lord Chamberlain had banned Granville Barker's plays, so we'd better draft some sort of reply. Oh, that's wonderful. Really? It's just what we've been waiting for. You better go with George. I'll be done later. Can't I stay with you? You'd be wasting your time. There's no money in it. What's the matter? I don't want your money. 